Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. In this clip, I will solve, uh, in these clips that I've been putting on the YouTube, I've been solving math problems that appear in this book, the official SAT study guide. It has eight exams in it with three, sec three math sections per exam. Right now, I'm going to solve a problem that appears in exam number five, section number seven. Page 673, question number 17. If after watching the clip you find it helpful, and if you wish to purchase the DVD that contains the solutions to all the problem, all the math problems that appear in this section, uh, please send me an email through my website www.prep p r e p for f o r s a t dot com prep for s a t dot com, and I'll take care of it. I'm located in Hartford, Connecticut in the US. If you wish to hire my services in, uh, in person for a face-to-face one-to-one tutoring, get hold of me the, uh, again, again as well. Uh, it does not prevent me from going anywhere on the planet as long as, as long as it's worth my time. Let's take a look at it. Number 17. I always wondered about this question, question number 17 that appears in this exam, because this, the concept that they are testing is so simple. The concept, uh, let me read the problem first. And you should have the book in front of you, because otherwise you will not follow it. You must have this book. There is no such thing as preparing for the SAT without owning this book. There are eight exams. You must practice them. Do not practice on the fake exams that are there on the market all over the places. I can't name their names. Practice from the real exam. This, this book contains eight real exams. The question says, if one circle has a radius of half of... Sorry, if one circle has a radius of half and the other circle has a radius of one, what is the ratio of the area of the large circle to the area of the small circle? What are they actually asking you? What, are the, what is the concept that they're testing here? The concept that they're testing here basically is what happens to the area of the circle when you double its radius? Some people in their haste might say, well, if you double the radius, the area should double. Area will not double. Area will, well, we'll see. Let's take a look at it. Here's my circle here, small circle. Let's say the radius equals one. And here's my other circle. Let's suppose the radius of this thing equals two. How do you find the area of a circle? It's pi r squared, pi r squared. So the area of this thing is simply one pi. Area of this thing on the other hand is pi r, r squared. Area of this thing is four pi. The area of the large circle is four times the area of the small circle, even though the radius is only twice as much. Why is the area four times? Because the radius is being squared. So whatever the radius is, when you square it, you can end up with four times the quantity. For example, if the radius was three, let me start again. For example, if the radius of this thing was 3, it would be pi r squared. And the radius of this thing the radius of this thing would have been 6, which is same as saying pi r squared, which is 2 times 3 squared. What does it boil down to? You got your 3 squared there, but in addition to that, you got a 2 squared, 2 squared. So this is basically pi times your 3 squared, which you have here, times the 2 squared. So as you can see, this quantity, this quantity is 4 times as large as this quantity because of, because of the fact that the radius is twice and therefore that, that the multiple of 2 is being squared. It becomes 4 times. So if you have one circle with the radius half and the other circle with the radius 1, which has twice the radius, the area of the large circle is going to be 4 times the area of the small circle. So the ratio should be the area, the ratio of the areas of the large circle to the small circle should be simply 4 to 1. That's all it is. The answer is D. The answer is D. That is basically the concept that they're testing here. But if you want to do it out properly, if you, if you wish, academically, it's very simple. The first, 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 first circle that we have is pi 
r squared and the other one that we have is pi r squared. You see, one has a radius of one, the other one has a radius of half. So this boils down to pi over four and this is just pi. As you can see, this quantity is four times that quantity. The ratio is four to one. The answer is D. While I'm at it, that's it, huh? that's it, I'm done with this particular problem, okay? But while I'm at it, I'm going to take a couple of seconds. Of course, when I say a couple of seconds, I'm lying. Let me just take a look at it, how, how much we have gone. We are about six minutes into the clip, so let me take a couple of minutes. What happens if, what would have happened if instead of area, we had been dealing with some concept that deals with volume. What happens to the volume of a thing when you double the side of a cube? If you have a cube, let's say a cube here, a one by one by one, as opposed to a cube here, two by two by two. The question is, what happens to the volume of a cube when you double its side? That's my question. Does it become, does, does the volume become twice as much because you double the side? Does it become four times as much? No, it, it's going to become eight times as much because now we are dealing with three dimensional concept. So when you double that quantity, that multiple of two is being cubed. You see here, the volume is simply one. Whereas over here is 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So that's what it is. Just keep that in mind. When you're dealing with area of a circle, area of a circle, uh, when you double the radius, the circle becomes 4 times as large. When you're dealing with the vo volume of a cube, when you double the side, volume becomes 8 times as large. All right? Thank you very much. Send me comments, post, the, post comments on the, on the YouTube, uh, subscribe to the channels if you wish to get my videos right away and, and get hold of me if you need to purchase the book, either the official essay study guide or this vocabulary book that I have been recommending, it's called Vocabulary Energizers. It's very important that you work on the vocabulary, otherwise uh, there's not much hope there in the reading and the writing part because reading and the writing part, a big portion of that exam is basically your, your vocabulary. These are, these are wonderful books that, are, that, 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 that you can find, uh, that you can use, and uh, get the most, a lot out of it. They are on my website. Go to www.prepforsd.com and just click on vocabulary books. Okay? Thank you.